Hey everyone, welcome to Learning Tech 101. My name is Renik, and today what I want to chat with you about is the OSI model. Now the OSI model is a standard that was developed for standardizing network communications in 1983. So this was created by the International Standard Organization, ISO. Reason for creating this was to be able to standardize the way DIMFRID devices communicated. So this way you could have different manufacturers, whatever they look to create it network wise, still be able to work with other manufacturers items instead of you having to buy all IBM or I all whatever. Now you could purchase this and IBM and this is something else and this is something else and it still be able to communicate over the network together. So the OSI models consist of seven layers that are used to organize the way data is being sent across the network. So your seven later layers are the application layer, presentation layer, session, transport, network, data link, and physical. So application layer starts off as your seventh layer, whereas the physical layer is your first layer. Now, one of the things when it comes to the OSI model that some have found hard just starting off and getting into IT and they're having to learn the OSI model is actually remember what the order of the OSI model is. So there have been some sayings that have been created over the years to help people be able to remember what the order is uh, for the OSI model. So here's one of them. It's all people seem to need data processing. So it starts off at the application layer and it's a way of working your way down. So seven to one. Now, there's another one that is also common that starts off at the physical layer, layer one, and works its way up to seven. So for this one, we have please do not throw sausage pizza away. So remembering either one of these is going to help you be able to remember the order of it by just putting, you know, together the first letter of the layer with the first letter of your little saying and being able to help remember which order they actually go in. So let's go ahead and jump into the different layers. So the first layer we got is the application layer. So this is going to be responsible for network applications. So HTTP, FTP, SMTP, and their production of data to be transferred over the network. So this is when you open a browser and look to go to a web page, enter in that web page, hit enter. Now this is what's happening at the application layer. Now we're generating data that needs to get sent out over the network. So when we get to the presentation layer, so this is responsible for translating data from the application layer into a format required to get transmitted over the network. So this is also where encryption and decryption is going to occur. So the one that is sending it out on this layer, this is where it's getting encrypted. And then the one that's receiving it on their end, this is where it's getting decrypted. Now, when we look at layer five, this is gonna be our session layer. So this is responsible for the connection establishment, session maintenance, and session termination. So this is where the receiving or the sender system is reaching out to the receiving system to see are they available to actually establish a connection. And if they do, let's go ahead and establish that connection. Now they want to maintain that connection while long as data needs to go back and forth between these two systems. And then once all communications is done, they want to go ahead and terminate the connection. So whatever resources that were set aside for this connection are now free for other connections. The other thing that's happening at this layer is this is where authentication is occurring. This is going to be authentication between the two devices, not you putting in your username and password to prove who you are. It's not that authentication. So this is one device making sure they're actually communicating with the right device. Now, on layer four, our transport layer, this is going to be response. This is the responsible for the delivery of data. So this is how we're looking at the data actually getting there. So you have your two options. It's either going to be sent TCP or UDP. So TCP is going to be considered a reliable way of sending the data. So that means the two systems are going to be communicating back and forth to make sure that it all reaches there. Whereas UDP, this is going to be unreliable. So that communication that TCP does, UDP doesn't have. It has a much simpler header. So it is going to be a bit of a faster way of transporting data. So you may see UDP get used for streaming, audio, video, teleconferencing, video conferencing, those type of things because speed matters with that. Now, our next one is the layer three, the network layer. So this is responsible for the transmission and routing of data between host and different network. It utilizes source and destination IP addresses to determine destination and route. So this is where all your routing is occurring. So once it's determined that where you're trying to send this to is in a different network. Now we have to figure out how are we actually getting it to that network? Where is this network at? So this is where all your routing decisions are happening at. 
Now you'll see things on this layer, such as routers or the devices that actually operate and work on this type of layer, because they're going to be your ones making your routing, routing decisions. Next, we got layer two. So this is your data link layer. So this is responsible for error-free delivery of data from node to node. So it's going to forward data based on the media access control, your MAC address. Um, devices that you'll see at this layer would be switches, bridges, your network interface card. So now this is where data is getting sent from one device to the next device, not the destination, just the next device. So it's saying if you need to send someone to something at this layer, now it's sending out your system to what that next device may be, which is the switch you're plugged up to. So now it's delivering to that switch. And then from that switch, it's got to look at layer two again to be able to get it from that switch to the router that it's connecting to. So this is just delivery of data between the different devices that are it's going to have to travel through on its way to its destination. Now, our last layer is layer one. This is going to be our physical layer. So this is responsible for the physical connection of the devices. So you're going to see things such as hubs, repeaters, modems, and cabling at this particular layer. So this is where now everything that has been done to this data, starting at seven, getting all the way down to one. Now it's taking it, converting it to those ones and zeros and putting it on whatever medium it's going to use to be able to get there. So even though the name is physical, it doesn't limit it, just saying it has to be physical cables. So this is where you got Wi-Fi signal, radio signal, Bluetooth, anything that's gonna be used to transport that data from that system to the other system is going to sit at layer one. So there, the way it works is just to show a quick description, starts off at the application layer and then starts working its way down. So application layer is where we're now, we're going to uh, generate it, presentation layer, where we're gonna format it, session layer, we're gonna reach out to the other system, see if they're available. Transport layer, we're gonna decide how we're, use, how we're sending it, UDP or TCP. Network layer, we're gonna look at it and see, well, is this in our network or in a different network? If it's in a different network, how are we actually getting it to there? What is the route we need to take? Data link layer, this is where we're now we're looking at, okay, well, we need to get it to this next device. What? Let's make sure we're doing this without any errors, anything like that. And then physical layer, this is now where we're taking it and putting it on that medium that's gonna be used to transport it to the other side. And then once it gets to the other side, it for them, it starts at layer one and works its way up to it gets to layer seven, and then it's at the user on the other end. Now, there is another model that's out there that you may hear about, and that's the TCP IP model. So the TCP IP model is actually more current of how things actually work, but you will still see the OSI model reference quite a bit, especially if you're just starting off and you're learning about IT. And then, you know, when it comes to troubleshooting the OSI model, uh, the way it's broken down gets used quite a bit. So the way they match up, so you'll see that the application layer on the TCP IP model matches up with the top three layers of the OSI model. So your application, presentation, and session. So then your transport matches up with your transport, your network matches up with your network, and then your network interface of the TCP IP model matches up with the data link and physical layer of the OSI model. So you can actually say all the things that we just went over that are occurring and the OSI model, if you knew nothing about the TCP IP model, but actually knew how they matched up, you would have a, a idea of what should occur over at that other model. So we could say at the application layer of the TCP IP model, this is where uh, the user interaction, whatever is needing to get sent over their network is getting generated. This is where encryption and decryption are going to occur at. This is where the actual establishment of the connection would occur at, because those are the three things that are happening at those three layers on the OSI model. So knowing how they matches up gives you an idea of what to expect on the other side. Hopefully you find this helpful and I thank you for watching.